have not been impressed in the airport in a long time. Airports are normally like the worst experience ever. Hungry for the win. Ryanair? Better than Lufthansa? No way. But so far, so it's true. So this is to uh, Budapest and Hungary. Thank you for treating me and so many people so well. For whatever reason, this airport is so well organized. All right, so now that the girls are gone, uh, I gotta figure out what I wanna do here in Budapest. Um, the good thing about being here is it's very close to the Ukrainian border, so a lot of people are coming through every day. So I'm able to help. The bad news you know, about it is it just constantly is a reminder of uh, what's going on in Ukraine. Where do you come from? Ukraine, Krivo, Krivo, Rok, Ukraine. But it's good that it's a reminder. And it's good that these, uh, you know, the Russian war is on top of everyone's minds, is hopefully that will drive attention to it and it can help end it uh, sooner than later. In the meantime, I'm doing my best to help from here, uh, helping people who are coming through, um, raise awareness and to raise funds as well. Uh, I started a GoFundMe, mainly because it's really hard to send money to people in uh, Ukraine right now, uh, unless you have a Ukrainian bank account, which most people don't. This is what Hungary looks like here. Great public transportation. Lots of cars. Lots of cafes and restaurants. Lots of uh, history. PayPal is, you know, slow and stable and lots of uh, there's no such thing as like Venmo or you know or like things like that there. So uh, I'm fortunate that I have my Ukrainian bank accounts. I actually have two that are working. I can transfer money uh, into them and also out of them, so I can help people on the ground. So what's nice is in this beautiful park right here, there's an exposition with the Support Ukraine uh, uh, artwork and it's in Hungarian, which really uh, helps Hungarians understand it's in English and it's in Ukrainian. Ukrainians take on a role that they can never have imagined in a peaceful time. Defender, doctor, volunteer. That's really nice. Believe in the victory, the truth, and the light over evil. Uh, Anna writes, this is a reaction to Putin's speech on the eve of the attack of Ukraine. It's hard to say what he has in mind in order to twist the facts, lie, and to justify his crimes. It's hard to imagine, but I tried. Wow, these are really powerful, guys. I'll show these on my, my Instagram as well, but I'm happy that this is up. The city center of Ukraine, I mean, uh, Budapest of Hungary. So guys, that is my time here in Hungary, in Budapest. I'm on my way to the airport now. Come take the bus. It's nice that there's a airport bus apart from the city center here. All right, so this is the bus to the airport, guys. hours early at the airport for no reason because I already have my boarding pass and I just have this uh, 
small hand luggage, uh, which hopefully they'll let me bring on. Uh, I'm gonna go try to go to the down so I can get a little work done, and then I'll explain where I'm going and why. Oh, this is awesome. I can leave my laptop and everything in the bag. So this should be easy. Wow, that was easy. You know, it's funny, is Hungary is not really well known for like fast efficiency, except their airport it was amazing. It was the easiest, easiest process I've had in years. You don't have to take off your shoes. You don't have to take your laptop out of your bag. They're fast. They're pretty like polite and friendly. Like it was smooth, efficient. Hungary and Budapest, you guys did this right. Thank you so much for that. I don't know what I would do with this stuff, but um, I'd be tempted to buy a little duty free, but I'm gonna withhold. All right. So, so here is the airport, Budapest. It's nice, lots of people, uh, no masks are required. It's pretty comfortable. Oh, wow, they even give people from Ukraine meal vouchers. Yeah, cool. <laughs> it's really cool. I have not been impressed in an airport in a long time. Airports are normally like the worst experience ever. And this one in Budapest, it's been great. And I'm flying Ryanair too, which is like the low cost airline. Hopefully all that, you know, goes good, but wow, that was easy. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just still in shock how easy that was. Uh, the bus straight from the city center, that was like, two dollars so less than three bucks uh drops you off right in front there was like no line you can you, you can just use the digital boarding pass uh security took two minutes so now like i literally i got here five hours early i still have four hours and 55 minutes left because it was so fast so I might just uh do some shopping if i was Super baller. I'd be wearing uh, these Puma Boss shoes instead of these uh, Fiesta Sports shoes. But these are very nice. This is by, by far my favorite brand, if you guys uh, haven't realized already. But I'm not wasting my money on this because they're expensive. So I was looking at the sweater and checking the price. I was like, oh. It's I was like, it's 20 euro? I was like, I'll buy that. And then I realized there's a six, so that's 170 euro. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. All those Hugo Boss polo shirts I have, those are from Turkey. And they're like 12 bucks each or something like that. I like the brand, but I'm definitely not gonna waste money on new hottie. And look what it is, guys. Unlike Munich, Germany, Water fountains to refill my bottle. How cool is that? Actually, you know what? Cool isn't the word. How basic of a necessity is this that every airport should have? Especially if they actually care about the environment. Don't want people just throwing away plastic bottles all day. But hungry for the win. Ryan Air better than Lufthansa? No way. So far, it's true. The one thing I do spring for is half of a Priority Pass membership. So I have the Platinum Executive Volkov Lounges. Uh, one of my good friends, David, back in the US, has a Amex Platinum card that he pays like $500 a year for. It's crazy. So I basically give him half. I think I give him like $200 or so. I don't remember how much. And uh, I am an authorized user on his card. So I have one of his credit cards as well which don't worry, I never spend money on. Um, but I have a party pass card, which allows me into airport lounges worldwide, except for in Munich and Lufthansa, because they only have their private ones for Lufthansa residents. Uh, and I mainly have it, honestly, because when I have a guest or I'm traveling with a friend, I can bring him for free. Uh, but today, I'm by myself, because none of you guys wanted to come. So we're gonna try to go into this lounge. And if this works, I'm gonna be so happy. But not as happy as I would have been if I had just invested in blue chip art through Masterworks. Did you know that since 1995, 
blue chip art has actually outpaced the S&P 500 by 164%. Now I can personally say as a digital nomad, making money work for you is hard. I could try trading crypto or stocks, but it's a lot of work, especially when I'm moving all around the world and traveling, making videos. Luckily, there's something we can both do to defend our financial futures. And it actually takes practically no effort. I'm talking about investing in multi-million dollar paintings by artists such as Keith Haring, Bonsky, and Picasso. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually really easy now thanks to Masterworks. There are 360,000 plus members already diversifying their investments with art and it's been paying off because since 2017, they've sold three paintings with each returning over 30% to investors. Uh, though I legally have to add, past performance is no guarantee for future results. But 30 plus percent, holy cow, that's high. And now my subscribers get priority access to Skip Masterworks waitlist. So just click the link in my bio. All right. It's a pretty small lounge, but it's very nice. And it's quiet as well, which is always a plus. So I'm gonna get a little coffee, maybe some snacks, and edit a video, do a little work before my flight in four, four and a half hours. So I'll check back in with you guys. Right. Let's see what they have, guys. Some uh, falafels, I guess. What is this? Chicken meatballs, tortilla things. Oh, we have kiwis. That's nice. Never seen this in the lounge. Pancake machine. All right, I wasn't really gonna get pancakes, but I gotta do it. How oh, amazing is that? What if you just walked by and accidentally started making a pancake? I guess it cooks it while it's going under. I've never seen this in my life. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it. How cute is that? Just one little mini, mini tiny package. It's super hot, it just came out. It's a good pancake. This is a damn good pancake, guys. Mm. Uh, pasta. Some sauces. Nice hot food, guys. I'm excited for this. And a self-service bar as well. They also have the oldest TVs, I've seen. But it's okay. So we have, oh, pineapple juice. I'll mix it with a little sparkling water, a little pineapple, cocktail. Mini bottles of champagne. Rosé. This is pretty good stuff, guys. Alright, here we go guys. Here's lunch. A little bit of a French salad, aka formerly Russian salad. I have my pancakes and I have a little kind of deep fried things, chicken nuggets, fries. And I wasn't gonna drink right now, but I gotta open this little cute bottle of champagne, right? You can't be in a lounge there for it. Hungary Budapest with all you can uh, eat and drink champagne and food and not Enjoy a little bit of bubbly. So this is to uh, Budapest and Hungary. Thank you for treating me and so many people so well. And um, let's hope this Russian war ends soon. So we can all go back to Ukraine and enjoy it there as well. Cheers, guys. It's pretty good, actually. So that was a great office. I had a nice lunch and I edited the video while I'm waiting for it to render. I decided to go for a little walk and see how far my gate is. Uh, I think I still have three hours, but they've already showed the gate number, 816. That's really nice. There's absolutely no one here. I just have a 
little while ago. But while we have time, I'm gonna tell you the story about how inefficient the gas stations are in Hungary. I've never saw this in my life anywhere in the world. I've been to many countries, I've driven in many countries. Imagine this, you go, you go to the pump, you pump the gas, there's no way to pay at the pump. You can't use a credit card, you can't pay cash, nothing. You have to lock your car, and you leave it there, the next person can't start, start pumping the gas. You just leave it there at the pump, you go inside the shop where there's a long line. Uh, maybe you might decide to go to the bathroom, get a coffee, buy some snacks, pay for it. Tell, you know, you basically tell them what, you know, I had number pump number five. You pay for it. And then you probably decide, like, you know, you're inside. You're like, oh, I might as well buy some snacks and some candy and some drinks. So then you walk back to your car. And it's probably been like five or ten minutes by now. There's like three cars waiting behind you, and there's nothing they can do. They can't start, start pumping even. You unlock your car, you get in, you drive off. How inefficient is this? How can Budapest, the capital city of Hungary in the EU, not have pay stations at the pump? And, how, like, and what's to prevent anyone from just driving off? I mean, I guess the cops can chase you, but like, it's so weird. It's such a weird system. It reminds me of like, I don't know, like the 1970s in the US or something, if I was born then. That, that's how I imagine it used to be like, before like credit cards and stuff were invented. But when I was telling a friend, uh, he said, like he wasn't even shocked. He was like, yeah, that's just the way hungry is. Uh, things just are super inefficient and like made to create jobs. But at the same time, they could have just hired someone to, to be a cashier at the pump, you know, to save people's time. Because literally it was like a 20 minute wait for like two cars in front of me because every single person who went in had to wait in line. And they're like, well, I'm inside. I might as well go to the bathroom. I might as well buy some snacks. Anyways, this is my gate. I'm just like a five minute walk. So I really don't need to be here right now. This guy just ran all the way here. I think he missed his plane. I feel bad because there's absolutely no one here. That's easy jet. Oh, that's his plane right there. They could have let him on, but I guess they've already closed the uh, check-in. I wonder if that's my plane in Athens. It's just sitting here for the next three hours. It is nice though. Aside from the, um, the lounge, there's also a nice little cafe here. Everything's open. There's a little small duty-free, which is nice. And a nice little coffee shop, actually. I would almost actually just rather sit here and pay, you know, for the coffee than to sit in the lounge where it's free because it's bright here. It's actually really cheap as well. It's like three dollars for a coffee. And then this is really nice. Look at this. There's like little sitting areas here with plugs. This is even nicer than the business class lounge. Oh my gosh, guys, it's like brightly lit, the sun, nice screens. Guys, I think I might just move out here. <laughs> I just work in the free zone. Because Buda Budapest Airport, it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's nice. There's like power outlets everywhere. It's like brightly lit. This is actually better than the business class lounge. How crazy is that? So it's about 20 minutes before the flight, and we're here. It's got a pretty view. It's awesome because we can see chicken right there. So the line here, and then what's the chicken I need to scan in? We're basically inside. For whatever reason, this airport is so well organized. I wish every other airport would just do what Budapest does because this makes sense. Like, to scan people in. Uh, you take your time because they can do it from like half an hour earlier. And when the plane comes, I think we just get on board because they've already checked us in, they've already scanned us, everything's good to go. Alright, well, I assume the gate is now open because everybody just got out. But let's see how long it takes to actually board it. Should be pretty easy because everybody's already checked in. Alright, so here we are, we've got a board the flight. Brian's actually boarding in the back.
patterns. All right, we made it to Greece, guys. It was a little bit of a COVID checkpoint. A little bit disorganized, but not that bad. But I'm in Greece. All right, here's the $9 Metro to the city center. Compared to like $55 taxis in the US, in New York it's cheap, but $9 is actually kind of pricey for being in uh, Europe. All right, and this is my Airbnb. It is probably the nicest apartment in the worst part of town. But this is where I've been sitting, getting some work done. Uh, really nice TV area as well. And a balcony that overlooks the worst neighborhood in all of Athens. I'll probably show you guys another day. But uh, yeah, it's been nice. And maybe I'm gonna watch a little bit of a TV but let me show you guys around. And then I need to tell you why I actually came to Athens. Uh, let me give you the tour first and then I'll tell you. So this kind of entrance area has been wasted. They definitely should have put a mirror or something here. Uh, here's the bathroom. It's small, but really nice actually. And I actually have a guest room guys. So if anyone wants to come, it's uh, available until April 6th. That's when I'm checking out. So I've been using it as just a closet. Here's the kitchen. It's uh, super nice. And actually I've been cooking a bit. So my fridge is uh, pretty full. This is really good dark chocolate or um, Greek chocolate, by the way. And whatever this stuff is, it's super tasty with pistachio. And, and here is my bedroom. These are the most comfortable beds and uh, sheets I've had in a long time. And this is pretty cool too, this uh, blackout storm. Uh, Storm cards. All right, anyways. Uh, so the reason why I moved to Athens was because my Airbnb in Budapest was up and I just need a little break, you know? I feel like when I'm there every day, I think I mentioned in the beginning of this video, like literally every day I was going to the train station and I was uh, helping someone. And I was very happy to have been able to do that these past three weeks. Or even month, I guess. Well, it's been a long time, but uh, I'm just exhausted, and I needed like a little, little break. I needed some time to even edit the videos, which is why uh, a lot of the videos are one week. I won't call them late because it's still getting a video up within a week is actually still pretty fast for YouTube. But I wanted it to be a little bit quicker because we're dealing with uh, a lot of situations where time is kind of very vital right now because of the war uh, with Russia attacking Ukraine. Things changed so quick that I really wanted the videos to be as live as possible, you know, with, out within two or three days. Uh, so I wanted a place just to be comfortable, have a nice apartment, and just be able to edit the videos and get them up. So that's why I came here. And I found a really good deal uh, on this Airbnb. Um, and a really cheap flight. It was a, I think it was thirty-five dollars to get here or something. Uh, and my flight next uh, is going to be like twenty or thirty, you know, thirty bucks as well. So I'll tell you guys later uh, where I'm going to go next. But this is like kind of my little break, um, just to chill for a little bit and have a little comfort, have some uh, Greek food, and be. A little bit out, you know, out of the zone. I'm super happy I brought my VR headset with me, my trusted little Oculus, because this has been my fun as well as my workout playing uh, the old fight. Anyways, guys, as much as I would like to try to avoid what's happening uh, in the world, at least for a few days, I can't help but watching uh, 
for the YouTube <laughs> and being reminded of what's happening. So I'll be back to the border, guys, to help out more. I just needed a few days to my own. I hope this war ends soon. And anyone in Russia who dares speak out again.